Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of One Man Stream. In today's episode, we're going to take a deep dive into our football VMIX UTC layout. Today, we're going to show you the main section of the setup, which fires off the graphics, uh, which clears the overlay channels, it brings in the audio. Uh, it also puts all the information into the scoreboard and uh, to the break graphics that we use. And then we'll also show you how we can present some graphics during the production for the different players on the teams. Uh, we actually have, if you look right down here where it says uh, live stats, uh, you can actually put in live stats and I'll show you how we do that. We also have some overlays over here to give props to the announcers and referees and whoever else you would like to uh, acknowledge during your production. So we're gonna have that and so much more for you on today's episode of One Man Stream. So first off, let me uh, direct your attention to this upper corner here. And when I do this, I'm going to bring in our scoreboard overlay. And you'll see right here, uh, the, the game clock. Uh, this is how we start and stop the game clock. So if we hit the start button right here, you can actually see over here uh, that the clock starts. And we can hit this button here to pause it. I'm gonna go, go ahead and show you this button, but I'm not gonna go into detail on any of the buttons today. We're gonna save that for uh, another day. Um, I do have some commands uh, put into this, start and pause. Um, keeping the, the clock, if anybody has ever done high school football or any type of, of a high school sport, uh, it's actually a person, it's actually a job for just one person. It takes that much time uh, to keep the clock. But what I've done here is I've just created two keys. One is start and one is pause. And those are operated by the F5 key and the F6 key on my keyboard. And that's how I can start and stop. Uh, without having to come to these uh, small buttons right here to start and stop. So I'm going to go ahead and hit F5. And you can see right here where the clock starts. I'm going to hit F6. And you can see right here uh, where it pauses. And then F5 again. And it starts back up. I'm going to go ahead and bring the uh, intro in now. And I'm going to click on the intro button. And you can see this is our graphic that we use to kind of set the stage for the game when we're opening the production we'll bring that in and uh, you can see some information here where it says south odom uh, high school and if you look over here this is where that information is going and uh, i'll just go ahead and get rid of a couple of the letters so that you can see that that is what is populating that information this information down here where it says dragon field that comes in from right here and then um, where it has the team names and the mascot name and then the record, uh, that actually comes from right here. So if you look at that graphic, uh, Fern Creek is the team on top. Let's go ahead and click this uh, from the drop down list, uh, team one. And you can see that Fern Creek changes to team one. So we'll go ahead and change them back. Then over here for the home team, the South Odom Dragons, if I hit the drop down menu and choose team two, it'll change that to team two. And we're, we're just gonna go ahead and, and set them back to South Odom. The dragon information, it is actually a list widget. After you choose from the drop down menu, if you go inside and click on it, you can actually change the information uh, that's in there. You can see as I backspace, it gets rid of the Chargers rec. Oh, and we're gonna go ahead and put 0 and 4 back in there and get it back to where it was to begin with. And then this field over here does the same thing for the home team. It brings in their mascot name along with their record. This next section down here is the logos. You can see all the logos that I have uh, collected over the years. I have logos for most of all the local high school teams here in the area. And then this top part is all the different inputs within this uh, vMix production, this vMix football production. Uh, that I have it mapped to. So anytime I change it in one place, it changes in all the uh, inputs that I have uh, mapped it to right here. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. And then right here, let me bring the scoreboard back in again. This right here is the uh, timeouts for the visiting team and for the home team. If you look right here, these yellow bars, uh, these indicate the timeout. So if I go up to the visiting team, and I backspace and get rid of one of the bars. You can see the timeout goes away. 
I hit it again, a timeout goes away. Uh, or I hit it one more time and one more timeout goes away. Okay, this next section right here is when a visitor score a touchdown or the home team scores a touchdown. So I'll just go ahead and uh, click on that. And uh, up where it said Pegasus Sports, that goes away and brings in the word touchdown. That stays in for a while. And then that goes away and it brings the Pegasus Sports logo back in. And then I have some automation with this button and then it brings in the score, adds to the score. So we'll do th the same thing for the home team. It says touchdown. It takes the Pegasus Sports um, away. It brings in the word touchdown. Then it brings Pegasus Sports in and then it adds six. And uh, the way that fades in and out is through a data change uh, function that you can use in uh, GT Title Designer. And I showed you how to do that with the uh, score widget uh, tutorial. Over here we have the quarter. Just from the drop down menu, we can change the quarter, second quarter, change it to halftime, and then we can change it to final. And that's all done through this uh, list widget here in the drop down menu. Uh, the next is down and distance. I have most all the uh, common down and distances already preloaded, but I also have for when you have odd uh, yardages, like I'll go ahead and click on this one. You can see it comes up first and, and then I'll use this other section over here and I can put whatever I need to in there first and 25. So you can see it makes it a little bit easier. I don't have a drop down uh, selection for first and 25. So uh, you see how that can be really helpful. Go to another one. Now we have second down. Team's not doing very well at all. Now we have second and 35. And that makes it a lot easier. So let's go on and show some of, the, uh, some of the other graphics. This was the intro graphic. We saw that. This is one of our break graphics we use. Here's another one of our break graphics. And then we have some uh, overlays that we use. This is the uh, uh, score bug for Pegasus. This is one of the productions that we do. And I'll bring that in. And you can see that comes in in the upper right-hand corner. We'll get rid of that. Their pregame show is sponsored by Baptist Health, so I have a graphic for that. Halftime sponsor is Champion Chevrolet, so we'll get rid of that. And this section right here is the uh, music that we use uh, during the broadcast. If you want to learn how to do the commands uh, for the fade, uh, I would suggest watching our tutorial on uh, the volume widget. Uh, we go over the step-by-step -step and the logic behind the commands that you need to use in order to do this fade function. I have a whole lot of automation in this right here. Uh, this is our go to break button that we use. And I just want to draw your attention. Uh, when I hit that button, not only does it bring the music in to take us into the break, it removes the scoreboard and then it brings in our uh, break graphic. And I'll click it one more time so you can see all that. We have a visitor bio and a home team bio. And this is actually uh, what we had set up for a, an indoor football league uh, that we were doing production for for a while, the uh, Louisville Extreme. This information is populated right here. Um, if I click on another one, you can see that it changes and brings in uh, the information. Uh, this next part here is live stats and it immediately sends the uh, stats to preview. You can see right here in the preview if we hit the button next to it, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to send it to program. So that way we can make sure we have the uh, correct information uh, before we go live. So let's go ahead and put some information in here. And we'll just add some information in quickly. And just on the fly, I put in there that the, the uh, player was uh, five for six with three TDs. Uh, if, it was a, if you want to put a graphic up for a running back, it's, it's just as simple. And just like that, 10 rushes for 120 yards, two TDs. So that's just something that uh, allows you to put information in uh, on the fly. Right. Uh, the next part here, I really like this because the client that we use, he actually provides us with slides to use during the game. And so I just put all of them here in a drop down menu. And then when I hit uh, uh, the name of the production is, is Pegasus Sports that we're doing this for. So when I click this, uh, you can see that it brings in this slide. All the slides are listed in this drop down menu here. So as I go through, you can see that the slides are changing. Keys to the game. 
And what I do is uh, I do this production for the uh, uh, for Pegasus Sports remotely, and I just listen for keys from the uh, the play-by-play -play announcer and the color commentator, and then I just go with these slides uh, on the predetermined cues. This section right here uh, will clear certain overlay fields. Let's go ahead. This one here is on overlay channel three, so if I click this, it's going to get rid of it. Uh, the Pegasus bug, that's probably going to be overlay channel 2. So I click overlay channel 2, it gets rid of the bug. So that's just a, a very convenient way of getting rid of, of certain overlay channels. Right here are the audio faders. That's how we can manually fade uh, the music in and out if we want to do that. Right over here is the uh, master volume and then volume for bus A. This is a lower third that we use for acknowledging the announcers during the game. So let's go ahead and click that. And all these graphics uh, I made in GT Title Designer and I also have automation. So it's going to stay on for a certain amount of time and then it's going to go away. One thing that you'll notice anytime I click one of the buttons that has automation in it, you'll see that they'll, uh, the outline, there'll be a green outline and that green outline stays on until all the automation uh, has ceased. You'll notice that when I click the lower third, it takes the scoreboard out, it brings in the lower third, and then after a certain amount of time, it takes the lower third out and then it brings that scoreboard back in. All right, so we pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover in today's tutorial. I hope you found it informative. Uh, with a follow-up of this, we'll do like we did in the replay tutorial, where we'll actually go behind the scenes on every button, and I'll show you the commands behind every button, I'll show you the automation, and I'll show you the sequence that we do things to make sure uh, that everything plays out the way that it should. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, please give us a like and a thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe so you'll be alerted as soon as new videos are posted. And you can go to our website at www.onemanstream.com. And the vMix UTC setups that we're doing there, you can download them uh, from the website if you'd like. Uh, make sure you come back often. And as always, thank you so much.